find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome to our roaming corner of the rambling internet. What? Our water cooler. How did that go? Did I just flip that around? Is that what happened? Yes, good, it's good. Go, it's go, good. It's go, good. It's good. Go. I'm Mike Sorg here. Ready to, talk movies. Post. <laughs> Ready to talk movies with you guys. I got a few friends here. Once back, once again, back in the studio, full of pizza. There he is, finishing off his slices. Malengo, how you doing, sir? I'm good. I can't wait to hear what you thought of Spider-Man. I can't wait to be able to talk about Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and also join us for the Bronx, New York, is Mad Mike. What <laughs> Hi, diddly ho, name Maritos. He ran right out and and, and bought the uh, the uh, uh, Lego Simpsons from the looks of things. So to be oh my fair, gosh. that wasn't my intent. No. My intent was to get the movie I saw today, and I just happened upon Lego Simpsons. Oh jeez, oh jeez, um, awesome! But yeah, this is your rambling movie minute. Uh, we're here live every Tuesday at live.sorgatronmedia.com, of course. Um, we're also on YouTube. We're on iTunes. We're on Stitcher, Spreaker, all that kind of stuff. We're everywhere. We're everywhere. 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 So let's get right into it. What happened at the box office this weekend, Malengo? Uh, uh, a, a, a surprise. A holy, huge thing holy happened hell. at the box office. It was like a kick in the face. I don't know if it's a kick in the face to Marvel, but it was a kick. Neighbors, first week. So Spider Man second week lost its throne to neighbors. This blows my mind. Absolutely blows my mind. I saw this trailer. This is the uh, 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 Seth Rogen um, flick, and 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 I saw the trailer. Like, oh, that'll be fun. You know, maybe that'll be okay. You know, to to dethrone Amazing Spider Man in the second week. Yes. Wow. That is, I mean, to put in perspective of what this means. Uh, Captain America, I think, held the number one spot. Yes, the competition wasn't strong, but it held the number one spot, I believe, for four weeks mm -hmm. as a Marvel movie. I mean, compared to Frozen, Frozen held it for 11? Frozen's still on, I think, the top 20 box office. <laughs> Somewhere so, on there. But I think it's... I feel like... Sat okay, so two perspectives on this. Because uh, I saw both movies, and... I won't give my Spider-Man review just yet, but um, after seeing this movie, I do think the reviews hurt this showing. But with that also being said, Neighbors was freaking awesome. <laughs> so, I don't know. Seth Rogen, just, he's, he hit something that is just like raking him money now. Mm -hmm. It's like he can... Do no wrong. But he did for but be, he used to be the do no wrong guy, but then like Zach and Miri happened, Green Hornet happened. He had a like he he he's a roller coaster man. And this is the end didn't do that well. No, but I don't I don't but, think I really don't think it kind of intended to. But I, if it's I think genre, I think you guys it, are it well. um, discounting six very important reasons why neighbors did so well. Hmm. Each one of Zach Efron's abs. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. No, I'm, I'm believe dead that. serious about that. They, it's like why the other woman is the third on the box office because in the trailer they show, hey, Kate Upton has boobs and she bounces. In the trailer for number, for neighbors, they say, hey, look, Zac Efron is shirtless a lot in this movie. Mm -hmm. But I didn't go to see the movie for for his abs and yeah, you did. But I'm feels, sure you took feels. a lady friend to see it. And I'm sure she didn't mind that. Well, but the character he plays is pretty good as well. So, I don't know. I think, I don't know, like, here's, here's the crazy thing about that movie, though. Um, Like, if I had just gone into it just to see Zac Efron's uh, abs, which I'm sure a lot of women did go to see that, it was very deceiving then. Because the humor that was targeted towards that audience wasn't that, like, it wasn't that high. I mean, it was, it was pretty demeaning for your typical, like, high school female. Uh, and it, I think it played up a lot more on a married couple, which I think Seth Rogen was going for. And they just were able to pull in that frat bunch and say, hey, we still know what these people would like to see. So 
it plays on a lot of like i i think that was the magic in the in the stew here it played on a lot of like points that like a a lot of different genres could connect with Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. plus it's also really the only comedy out in theaters this is true what else i mean spider-man is kind of funny but it's not a comedy overall like i would say the other woman is a comedy yeah but that's 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 a loose comedy like (laughs) it's a it's a it's a family my mom is gonna go see this comedy yep like that was the target yeah 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 the other the other note i'll make on on uh neighbors was i i wanted to see it originally like right off the bat i didn't go see it till saturday i wanted to see it friday when it came out but i was i was talking to people at work and the, the you know the general consensus was it's going to be funny, but do you really want to pay like full price for this kind of movie? The ratings are what made me go see it Saturday. Mm -hmm. It was pulling in 74% on Rotten Tomato. Wow. Compared to Spider-Man's 54. I mean, that's that held up. So yeah, I mean, that's the movies for this weekend well well speaking of which with spider-man um so what did you think of spider-man so um i agreed i listened to what you guys talked about last week i agreed on a lot of the points but generally uh for me i think the critics were too harsh um usually with rotten tomato i don't i don't take rotten tomatoes like reviews as gold by any means um or as the standard but when you look at the critic reviews compared to the user reviews I, I definitely swayed with the users. I enjoyed the movie. Um, the comic strip that I had started drawing out basically summed it up like this. It was a movie that definitely highlighted Peter Parker in a great way. I thought what they did with him was, was good. And for the majority of the movie, it was like a grown-up movie with like points. But then it felt like right after the death, it was like, hey... We just want to remind you that this is a kids' movie. <laughs> it's the Mike's. Uh, you all right, Mike? <laughs> I I just saw a Twitter response that we got um, from from our from our friend our friend's wife in the mainstream media, Jen Carlins. Uh, she says Zac Efron's abs are magical. So <laughs> I'm not going to say I have a point there, but it's, I'd say I think it's a very Pretty valid point. Uh, <laughs> anyway, back, back to Spider Man. Back to Spider Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I mean, basically, the whole, uh, like Mad Mike said in his review, the whole end of that movie could have been removed and added to the next movie. And I think that would have been great. Mm-hmm. I don't, but because they wanted to hit that kid demographic, you know, it. Well, they also don't want it to end on a down note. Like, and I get that. I understand that, but for any Spider-Man fan, Peter Parker's life is a series of down endings. Yeah, it really is. Like it, it, the whole reason he becomes a superhero is because his uncle dies, and then his girlfriend's dad dies, and then his girlfriend dies, and then maybe yeah. another girlfriend dies. <laughs> like it doesn't go well for him. Yeah, agreed. And I do think like. Yes, I agree with the fact that the previews were completely giving away too much information yes. and they missold the fact that he would be fighting three villains at once. That was all just, you know, whatever. I thought Rhino being in a suit was lame. I thought Electro's build up to his character's arch was kind of pointless. Like, why not just have him be upset with the fact that they stole his plans and they're using his electrical system. Like, why do we have to involve the fact that he has this demented delusion with Spider-Man and like their best friends. And now like, I think it's good motivation. They actually way. took a little bit of that from the MTV Spider-Man series. Ah, okay. A I... little bit like, cause, cause the Max Dillon character in the MTV Spider-Man was one who didn't have any friends who didn't fit in anywhere. And the reason that he got his powers in that iteration Mm -hmm. is because some frat boys tricked him and there was an accident. And then he tried to vow revenge on them. So it was actually kind of a, kind of a weird take on that. 
So yeah, that, I think like that, there are like a lot of things in that movie that could have caused people to say, well, why are we doing this? But overall, like, I don't know. I There are a lot of people that were just hating on this movie, and I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. Hey, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, 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 I was reading like very spiteful reviews. I'm like, why? It wasn't that bad of a movie, guys. Yeah, like, and... like it's. It felt like it felt like it was more than just like a wham bam, you know, superhero thing. A wham bam um, Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, sh- <laughs> sh- sh- sure. You know, I was thinking about it a little bit more, and I liken it to Iron Man two. Okay. Oh, see, I, oh, I disagree, but continue. Well, no, well, no, we don't, no we don't but I, I like Iron Man two. So, like, Iron Man two had a lot going on. Mm-hmm. It had a lot going on. It had the underpinning of, hey, Nick Fury knew your dad, and he was a founding member of S.H.I.E.L.D., so here's the Black Widow in a cat suit. But you also have <laughs> um, Rick, Mickey Rourke doing a very weird Russian accent, but he's not really the villain because he's the villain behind the guy who's doing the real villaining, who's just an hammer, who is remarkably flamboyant. But he's not actually going to fight you. It's It's all very... Like, there was a lot of setup in both movies. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. I mean, I don't know. In comparison to other movies, I would say this is somewhere around your Iron Man 3, your Spider-Man 3. And I would actually bump it above both of those, which is, I know, arguable to a lot of people. Because a lot of people, for some reason, liked Iron Man 3. Dude! I loved Iron Man but, 3. But we will we will forego that. We will say, let bygones be bygones. But I I like this movie. Is that what we're saying? One thing that I will agree with people and critics was the fact that some somebody out there has tried to put together a formula that says, look at Avengers. Look at Batman. We need to set up these movies for a continuation of movies. So uh, you you can't you can't look you can't throw Batman into that. Oh, equation. okay. Well, it's, I, look at the we, Avengers. Look at the billions of dollars Marvel has made. But we're getting another we, Superman Batman integration. I mean, like somebody's out there is like trying to put together a formula, and it completely neglected the first movie. And in that, I feel like I agree with the fact that we could have had a stronger uh, go- Green Goblin. But I mean, for what it is. I'm still going to go see the Spider-Man movies because I enjoyed it. And I think that's what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. So, Also, uh, one of my friends just saw it. He saw it after I did, after we had talked about it. And apparently Harry Osborn never called himself the Green Goblin in the movie. Huh. Mm. This kind of leads me to think that maybe, maybe we see Norman. It, well, yeah. there, there's also speculation. There's a uh, supposedly deleted spot. Uh, scene from the movie where we see like Norman Osborn's uh, head in a jar, basically. Yeah. Well, I in somebody's speculation of of that, they said that they never actually show his like dead body. So there's another possibility now with the blood and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, that he can be healed and or we'll see a reoccurrence with the whole storyline. There are two. There are two characters in Marvel Comics history that I never assume is dead. One is Nick Fury. The other is Norman Osborn. Yeah. I never assume they're dead. Nope. So, that'll be interesting. Hold on. Let me check my notes. <laughs> well, I think you're, you want to talk about NBC next. Oh, yeah. NBC. So, so, I think, Mike, you and I had this conversation about why you don't trust you were worried about the gotham tv series uh, yeah yeah i mean i i like what i'm seeing from gotham and i know mike has a different opinion about that uh i like what i'm seeing from the trailer i like the potential of this i am just continually worried because of fox because i remember what they did to my beloved uh terminator series yeah and then i went as far as to defend fox because i said because of the progression of what the came from terminator i feel like fox learned its lesson okay nbc i don't feel nbc has learned anything (laughs) they just canned if you pull up the list um of some of the movies or television is it this one here yeah uh is it that one 
Yes. Um, so fortunately, as you saw at the top of that picture, your uh, your Agents of Shield got renewed. There was speculation Woo-hoo! before the movie that it might not get renewed, mm-hmm. and obviously with the spike of interest tying in through the movie, they are getting a second season. But uh, some of the shows that are getting canned, I mean, there are some shows that NBC has kept that I thought were good. But the big one that they canned that I thought was annoying was Community. And my thing about canning a season is you could see the the writing on the wall. If you think the ratings are not going to get to what you think they are, you got to give them an outlet to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. It holds your viewers loyalty or at least appreciation to your network to say, all right, this is our final season. Let's just end it. Mm-hmm. And plus, you know? a final season always gets bigger ratings because you throw in that tag, the final season. Exactly. Like that's, that's what USA did with Psych. Mm-hmm. And uh, Burn Notice. Yeah, yes. That too. Yeah. Yeah, to, to, to great effect. Um, wait, is Psych, is Psych done? Was Psych done under, after seven or eight? Uh, I want to say seven. Seven? It was like that last season was their last season? I believe so, okay. yeah. Because I'm actually just getting on top of that with uh, Netflix right now. You just released it, so awesome. And I mean, I'm looking at the list of canceled shows from NBC. Community is the only one I watched. I did watch like one episode of Ironside, and well, a lot of it is is looking at their um, their fall lineup. <laughs> They're getting rid of comedies. Yeah, Michael J. Fox, uh, Revolution. Yeah. I think was a couple seasons. Revolution, in. Revolution, Revolution made it to two seasons. Dracula. Um, my, my girlfriend's completely upset about Crisis and Believe being canceled because she watched both of those. Well, that's is, the running joke. This is, why even watch it? Exactly. This is exactly why I don't get into series. Tend to not get into series. I'll wait until I see, oh, hey, they made a second season. Oh, everybody's talking about this. You know, and then I'll go back and say, okay, is it on Hulu, Netflix? Let me catch up and, and we'll see what's going on. You know. And I, I said this before we went on air, but I believe that NBC has been cursed by heroes. I agree with that. Because like, like, they, like ever since they canceled heroes, they have not been able to keep a show that's consistent on Mondays. They mm-hmm. tried for years to get a show that was a consistent hold on Mondays. And while heroes didn't have the best ratings, it had a very loyal fan base. Yeah. And marketing out the wazoo. They sold a lot of heroes merch. I remember us being torn between uh, hell wrestling and and heroes. Uh, I wasn't torn. I was watching heroes before wrestling. That's right. That's right. I was watching heroes before because I would come in at ten o'clock in wrestling, and they would recap the main things in the first hour. I'm like, okay, I'm good. Mm. But I would watch heroes first. Yeah, yeah. Now you're gonna have something similar potentially with Gotham being nine no. o'clock on Mondays. Nope, no. not at all. Not you at all. So. Nope, <laughs> not happening. Okay. No, Gotham. I will watch. Later, like I'm still gonna watch it, but ah, uh, so many problems, so many problems. Uh, you know, my problem is, that, you know, of course, I do this on Tuesdays. I got wrestling on Mondays, and, and <laughs> I'm not gonna see it until Wednesday. I'm gonna have to get through two days of everybody talking one way or another about it. Or, or, and you're probably gonna watch Arrow and Agents of Shield first because you yep. should. The Agents <laughs> of Shield's on Fox, amazing. right? No, it's on nope. CW. On a- what? Agents of Shields on ABC. Oh, ABC. ABC. Arrows on CW. Um, well, Agents of Shields on ABC, the Disney company that now owns owns everything oh, Marvel. Yeah, that of makes sense. Of course, they're going to be doing that. I mean, I of Shield. Um, from what I read in the release, they're going to have their first part of the season. Then during the winter hiatus, that's when they're showing Agent Carter. Really interesting. I'm supremely excited about that. It's going to be like a marathon of. Just about every week, a new Marvel TV show. Good. Good. Keeps it up. You know? Keep, keep, keeps everybody excited. You know? So I, hope Arrow, I hope Arrow and Flash are on back to back. That'd be good. That'd be that's what good. I'm hoping for. I still have to get caught up on Arrow. And that's what I actually liked. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm looking at NBC's lineup. Grimm is good. Yeah. Parks and Rec is the final season. We already know that. Hannibal. See, exactly. You could have had huge ratings if you had the final season of Parks and Rec and the final season of Community. I know. Thursday nights would have been huge. It, it makes no freaking sense. I mean, and even Hannibal. The problem I have with Hannibal is it's a very compelling story, but 
I'm starting to get to that point where the crime dramas are just like depressing. It's like that's why I stopped watching Criminal Minds. I don't really care that much for Law and Order because I feel like everything's reaching. TV is just becoming pointless. Like that's why I DVR everything. It's like yeah, yeah, I'll just watch it whenever I'm bored. But yeah, I don't know. I don't get NBC. That is what it is. Good for them. On to the next one. I mean, CBS, <laughs> ABC, I think they're doing a phenomenal job. I think they have compelling stories. And Fox, I mean, I've been loyal to Fox, even though they're strange sometimes with their sci-fi. But, like, people were saying, like, oh, well, it'll be fine. Community can get picked up by Netflix. And it's like, no, that's not necessarily true. How long did it take for us to get Arrested Development? No, and Community can't get picked up by Netflix because... Uh... I was talking to a buddy who lives out in L.A. He says Hulu has the exclusive digital rights. So if anyone picked it up, it'd probably be Hulu. I can see it. I think they do quite well because I think your audience is there. And to be honest, I might consider paying seven ninety nine for three months to watch the conclusion of Community. Or I'll just find it somewhere else. But whatever. <laughs> Hulu Plus is pointless. But yes, sorry. Uh, they're not sponsoring the so, show. So. No, no, no. So, so there's another great show. This look, I and, and it's NBC. So who knows? But please, please let this thing have legs. <laughs> one and done. This is gonna have a great one season. DC, <laughs> DC is gonna have a hell of a fall here. They got Flash coming out. They got Arrow. It's like you know, just like is this a resurgence? Apparently, the comic books aren't doing so good right now. They're, I guess they're rebooting the new Fifty Two yet again. Uh huh. Oh, don't give me um, started. The, new 52. the movies. We'll see what happens with this uh, Justice League maybe movie. We'll talk about that in a moment. Hmm. Um, but DC has Flash coming, Arrow's going strong, Gotham's coming up, and another one based on Constantine of all things. Yeah. Not the Keanu Reeves Constantine. The actual. It sounds like we're actually going to be Hellblazer the TV show. Yes. And I mean, at first I saw the title and that's why I got excited because I thought it was the, Ke the Keanu Reeves uh, <laughs> rendition. But after watching this trailer, I mean, there's some kind of weird stuff with the, the character acting. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much of that comes from the actual comic well, book. It look, From the little bit I've read, this is closer. As in, it's a British guy. He's a blonde British guy. He's kind of a dick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. This this seems like it's a little more close. You know, a little more to it. The trailer looks amazing. The trailer, like I watched it right before we went on. The trailer looks absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. Like it looks kind of like a superhero version of American Horror Story. Yes, and I mean, with that being said, it's potential. And, and don't consider it a superhero movie. No, uh, but Hellblazer never... is not a superhero. He's from the Vertical Vertigo imprint. It's a more adult thing. It's where they had stuff like Sandman, um, things like uh, oh, what's the uh, geez, the guy with the mask? Um, ah, the mask. No, not the mask. That was Dark <laughs> not Horse. The mask. Why can't I remember the one with Natalie Portman and uh, uh, Oh, uh, V for Vendetta. V for Vendetta. Uh. Thank you. That that's your Vertigo. Uh, a lot of the uh, there's there's another one called like the not the Runaways, but there's something there was another movie that came out. Like the weird things you see, there's a DC imprint in the movies. It's probably from the Vertigo imprint. It's a more adult, non DC superhero universe type of thing. Um, so. So, I mean, it's it's that. It's not, this is not Batman world, okay? This is not Superman world. This is something that's DC in name only. So. But, again, in my defense, it's going on NBC, so not the good can come from that. Hence, heroes. <laughs> Hopefully, it's, it's Fridays. So they're not we're trying to go for that Monday thing. Uh, so, we'll geez. see. I, I'm, look, I'm really looking forward to it. I, I am. I am. And, and considering these kinds of shows are doing really well right now, Sleepy Hollow's coming back, right? Is it coming back? I, I don't so. know. Is it on that list? Sleep, Sleep Hollow is coming back. Well, that's good. Grimm's obviously doing well. Grimm uh, is good, though. But I don't know. Sleepy, Sleepy Hollow, I got only a couple episodes in, and then I kind of got lost in television. I, You know, I, 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 I on Sleep, I think we mentioned this before on the show, but I really hope Sleepy Hollow stays to 13 episodes a season. I hope they don't get, like, a giant 26 order, because I feel like when you have to fill... You know, you got because 
seasons typically are you have to get from point A to point B, and you'll maybe have three or four episodes completely dedicated to that, but then there's a lot of filler content. I think you're seeing that a lot with Grimm. Actually, Grimm's doing a really good job because they have a lot going on. Yeah, they, They're like, yeah, we're still Monster of the Week, but it really kind of integrates with everything else that's happening too. Yes. So, uh, Anybody care about a revamp of Daredevil? Yes. Yeah, the, the Netflix <laughs> one? <laughs> We're talking about the Netflix one, right? No, that's going to be awesome. Mm-hmm. I don't it's know why you're so bummed. <laughs> Come that's going to be amazing. It's the Defenders. It's going to be Daredevil, Luke Cage, Jessica Jones, Iron Fist. It's going to be awesome. It's good. If it, Malengo, these are the characters that you don't give a crap about, <laughs> but you will after they're done with this. After yes. Ben Affleck destroyed and guess what? Daredevil. Matt oh, Damon is Daredevil. <laughs> Have you seen the director's cut of Daredevil? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right, Malengo, yes, that's, your, that's your homework. You need to watch the director's cut of Daredevil. <laughs> it has 100% more Coolio. It does. Yes, it does. <laughs> not joking. It does. He's not kidding on this. <laughs> it's the... The director's cut of Daredevil, I maintain to this fact, if it came out after Batman Begins, it would have been huge. Yeah. It would have been absolutely huge. And I think I think because he... when when Daredevil first came out, superhero movies weren't really dark. They weren't long. They weren't like two hours. They were probably less. I thought Spider Man was two the and a half director's hours. Cup, you're... Was Spider Man? The first Spider Man was not two hours. This Spider Man was two and a half hours. Really? Yes. Yeah, this Spider Man was. Huh. Captain America is like two hours and 20 minutes. Like, the director's cut of Daredevil, if it came out after Batman Begins and um, Christopher Nolan showed that, hey, superheroes can be dark too, it would have been amazing because. Michael Clark Duncan as the Kingpin is fantastic. Colin Farrell as Bullseye still may be one of my favorite Marvel villains ever. Jennifer Garner is okay at best. But yeah, Ben Affleck okay. kills it. I'm with that. He crushes I'll it. I'll probably rewatch it. I'm with him on that one. Because I, I don't I don't think I hated the movie. I think it was just kinda like eh. I'll I'll rewatch it. I'll give it that too. Do you need a director's you need cut? The director's do, cut though. do I need, All right. do if I I need, need a, to lend? If I need the director's cut, if that's going to make it so much better. I'll lend, I'll lend you mine. And I do not lend DVDs very often. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll break yep. your make, make sure you have that before you leave. I would, uh, air mail, I would air mail you mine down if I had to. <laughs> quick. I'm sure next week's going to be crazy with Godzilla. But uh, just one quick weird note. I was looking at, um, I think it was from the fan fan.tv mm-hmm. where they were showing the the list for actors actresses in godzilla and elizabeth olsen was listed first over uh the guy from breaking bad and i mean just this is totally just me playing up on this this might not have anything to do with it but the fact that elizabeth olsen is like a pretty well-known character if you look at the trailer She's the wife that says, oh, you're scaring me. And then they hype up the soldier, which I thought, oh, well, do we really need that story plot? We just need a dinosaur destroying the city. Um, and I'm hearing. I was going to say, do any of the actors really matter in a Godzilla movie? Well, I, I, <laughs> it's Godzilla. I, I've been hearing really, really good reviews on this to the point where one reviewer on, on a podcast i was listening to was saying i don't do this but do not go to this movie spoiled like there's like nothing to spoil it i mean really you think i don't know they're not giving away a lot in the in the trailers okay i i mean like i said this this may just be me drumming up drama for no reason it might be nothing but i don't think we need to hold the like soldier and his family in that storyline unless it somehow it's just there for fluff so it's just weird just know it's also there because it's also there because elizabeth olsen is in the next avengers movie so people kind of probably want to get her name out there there you go that could be it there you go 
There you go. I, I, like, I, I mean, she was in the deleted scene from Cap 2. So, you I'm know, people know who she is. Still, I'm, I'm still in that point where um, I'm not sure if, uh, if I want to see Godzilla in the theater. Like, it feels like... Really? I, I don't know. It just feels like, like I don't need a movie oh, like because every time i've seen the trailer in the theater mm-hmm. it just it's so overly foreboding no and i just feel like i just feel like i don't know if i want to go to the theater for that okay i'm I mean, drawing it's just a the blank. Blank. I've, already, I've already what's that mike mm. i was trying to make a joke about that um the other movie and i can't think of the name uh the one with the found footage in New York City. J.J. Oh, Cloverfield. Abrams one. Cloverfield. Cloverfield. Yes. And, I, and I went to see Cloverfield. Yeah. Yeah. What and, did you and, think of Cloverfield? I loved Cloverfield. In the theater. I loved Cloverfield. But it, uh, it was very nauseous inducing. That was for sure. I, I, but, but see, but I the saw effect, Cloverfield in the theater and I hate it. But the effect, like, I don't think I would have been as affected by Cloverfield as a fun watch if I would have seen it on, on Ah oh, man, I'm going to have to go to see Godzilla, aren't I? You're going to oh, have to. Oh my god, you're making me have to do this. You have to. I might have to. Because especially imagine, the stuff, the rumblings I'm hearing. Pacific Rim. Come oh, on. Oh my god. Pacific Don't Rim. Pacific Rim me. Pacific Rim is great on television. It was amazing in theaters. I'm definitely going to theaters for two. I have to. <laughs> I have to. It's, it's wow. Yeah, that was that was a fun movie. Uh, the wife thinks it was Power Rangers. <laughs> you said Dude, that while we were like watching it. I saw, I saw, I saw about ten, twenty minutes of it before I fell asleep. So I just turned like it was on as I was trying to go to sleep, and uh, I like I don't, I, I'm not a kaiju guy. I'm not, I'm not like, I don't like <laughs> battle boards. I don't know. That's not my, that's not my cup of tea. Oh that's man, true. that's true. And yes, I made a battle boards reference in 2014. You're welcome, America. Hey, you know what? You're you're going to be allowed to because they're going to come out with a uh, Power Rangers movie soon. So I heard about that. <laughs> oh yeah, I can't wait. I want to see what they do with this. Oh uh, god! I, all right. Do you think on. they're going to make them the Who, same token? Who would you cast as Zordon? Because if it's anyone other than Morgan Freeman, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Listen up. <laughs> oh god! I'm sorry. Come on. Don't you want to hear Morgan Freeman go? Rangers. <laughs> like, <laughs> was it here we were talking about the Captain Planet? Yes. Uh, and I was like, why would they make that movie? Why not? I would go see a Power Rangers movie. Global warming I is officially well a thing see... now. Of course they're going to bring back Captain Ranger. Well, I want to see a Captain Wayne... Planet movie of Whoopi Goldberg as Gaia again. <laughs> Do it! Do it! Let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. Oh, uh, when our powers combine. <laughs> <laughs> and have, like, Dolph Lundgren again as Captain America. Oh, oh, no. All right, what's going on with these other two stories? I saw the Batman mobile. Is that the same one from the the uh, first movie? Or from... Yeah, so well, well, not the biggest thing was uh, this is what Ben Affleck is going to look like as Batman. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I cared. I'm okay with it. It's a no. it's a teaser. It's a really artsied up teaser photo over here, and we have it up here from the Nerdist. If you're on audio, I like how the symbol kind of looks like the the Dark Knight Returns symbol. Oh, I didn't even notice. I didn't even, you can barely see it on there. Yeah, you can, but it's like a big, thicker logo. Like okay, it's, okay. Yeah. I I feel like this feels to me. This feels very Frank Miller. Yeah, yeah, that's Dark Knight that Returns. So I'm. I like I and I, I thought I heard this is going to be an older Batman. So, yeah, that's yes. what I thought. So old, crusty, angry, bitter Batman. I am cool with Which that. Which is still weird that they cast Ben Affleck for that. He's older. I don't. No, think he's so. older. He I don't do think that. so because Ben Affleck is looking to repair his image from Daredevil because most people <laughs> didn't like it. So Have he's you going seen... to be angry and crusty and old and bitter? I feel like who's the other guy in the Ocean's Eleven? I don't know. There's like ten the other. Older, ones. The older dude. Come on, Missy. The old guy. George Clooney. 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 Let's bring Clooney back as Batman. No. Really? Whoa. 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 Time out. Time out. No. 
<laughs> no, I don't even oh, care. Please, I don't even care about Mike's fascination with Batman and Robin being like actually a decent movie in his eyes. <laughs> no, Sorg, Sorg. I've never said it's a decent movie. I just said that I love it. <laughs> there's a there's a very very big distinction there. I know. It's not a good movie. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Mooney is the worst Batman ever. He's a good Bruce Wayne. See, He's old, a very good Bruce Wayne. I think he could be old and grumpy. They just, they just need old grumpy. I mean, he's actually done like actual act, like great acting movies. You can't bring that to Batman. Come on, what? He wasn't paid to do that sort. He was paid to stand there and, say, and have a Batman credit card. The old guy. What? Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond. Oh yes. <laughs> oh, we can totally you can do yeah. that. I like no, this. You can do that. I was, I'm gonna start I tweeting was at that. A, a Batman at 75 panel down at the Paley Center in the city, mm-hmm. and one of, and Michael Uslan, the pro, the producer of all the Batman movies, said he would love, like personally, if he had his way, which apparently he doesn't, he would love to see a Batman Beyond movie with Clint Eastwood as old Bruce. Oh my. Oh, that wow, would that be interesting. Yep. All right, uh, one more story, and we gotta get out of here. Uh, so a- Arrow, I know nothing about this. Arrow is gonna be on, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, Flash is gonna be on Arrow uh, briefly. Uh, yeah, they 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 um release another trailer for the season finale tomorrow night, mm-hmm. and right at the end of the trailer, they have a quick shot of Flash. Is this different than the one I saw last week? No, well, what? Uh, just fast forward to the end of it, like the va- okay. like the, the last ten seconds of it. Trying trying yeah because trying. you'll um trying yeah but apparently after the season finale oh this is interesting uh-huh oh this is very Ooh. interesting oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah and apparently after um the finale they're gonna have a trailer for arrow so, after you mean for after, flash after i mean a trailer for flash okay after okay the... i'm into that i'm into that idea Cool. So if that's why I really hope they're back to back on the CW. See, schedule. I remember the old Flash, with Mark Hamill as the trickster and all that kind of stuff, which mm-hmm. I, I I love that they brought him in as the trickster back mm. when they did Justice League. So, yeah, awesome. Um, so I guess uh, what what we watch uh, as, as far as me, yeah, I watched Green Lantern and Video Game High School again because that was it during Chachi plays, <laughs> and we just and that was at like four in the morning. Yeah. 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 Mm. Uh, what about you, Mike? Uh, well, I watched the new DVD release today, uh, DC animated called Son of Batman, and it's about Damian Wayne. The son of Bruce Wayne and Talia Al Ghul. Awesome. Hmm. I haven't gotten uh, this yet. It was it was very interesting. I liked it. Um, I'm not gonna get too into it because I know I know at least you want to see it, Sark, So I'm not gonna spoil anything. Um, they deviate from the comic story, but I mean, as always with the DC movies, the voice animation was spot on. Like like the voice acting was great. Um, the fight scenes were incredible. There's a scene between Deathstroke and Damien that is so, so badass. The only thing that I thought was kind of weird was um, the animation of Talia. It almost looks like they rip off directly from the Black Widow. Hmm. I, I haven't read a lot of Batman books with Talia in it, so I don't know if that's how she's drawn or if they just, you know, hey, Scarlett Johansson looks good in slinky dresses and cat suits. Let's do that with Talia Al Ghul, too. Huh. But um, there's a lot of bloodshed, so if mm-hmm. you want your little children to see it, I would warn them just in case, even though it's animated. Yeah, they've been very adult with these. Uh, the, the Justice League War was definitely up there uh, as yeah. well. So. Yeah, although there's no um, bad language, hmm. <laughs> just which cool. I was very pleased with because I was surprised at how much there was in war. And this is the second film because this last Justice League and this are the first of the new shared universe movies they're going to be doing. And of course, we're going to have an Arkham Asylum movie, I think, later this year. That is it. So, so those who recall, they were saying that uh, Justice League Batman is going to be shared universe from now on in the animated films. Um, mm-hmm. And then they're going to subvert the... Uh, uh, yeah, like one a year is going to be something else that's outside of that. So the Arkham, uh, based on the Arkham Asylum run of games, uh, so so it'll be, yeah, so they can do something different and more more interesting. So 
All right, I'm I like to check it. both of those I out. I like it. I like it. What about you, Malango? I watched a boatload of movies. I don't okay. know why, but I'll just do quick reviews. Okay. Uh, I saw nonstop. Uh, that was interesting. I would say, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> this is this is the taken on a plane, right? Yes. No. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> kind of. But no one's taken ish. But yes, interesting. Neighbors, go see it. It's hilarious. Shadow recruit. Uh, uh, What's that one about? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a chris chris review. pine <laughs> uh it's based off of the tom clancy author okay uh so that's his final movie before he died oh um i don't know i feel like i honestly that's the first time i watched the movie and i was like i bet the book would have been amazing um but yes pompeii no no, that's a, that's a head shake for audio. <laughs> for, no. for our audio listeners, uh-uh. he's just shaking his head derisively. We know how Pompeii ends. So just if, <laughs> if you want to watch Pompeii, just do yourself a favor. Go on Netflix and watch the Pompeii episode of Doctor Who instead. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Don't you get a glimpse of the of the new Doctor in that one too? Yes, yes, you do. He's, yes. he's in that. <laughs> that's yes. What Mad Mike said. Do that. <laughs> I uh, I spelt this wrong, but Arlington Road, which is uh, with uh, Jeff Bridges, uh, it's actually a good one. Um, it, I think it came out. I don't know when it came out. Should have looked that up. But I recommend it. It's on HBO Go right now. I think you can find it on Amazon. Um, it's an older movie, but oh my gosh, it's a tie-in with what's going on right now in our government. So okay. it's interesting. Um, and then I watched Armageddon. Because oh, I was writing, Harry. I was writing a blog on old movies, uh, and whether or not they're really as bad as we thought they were, and I had to hold back a tear. Armageddon is still good. Sorry, guys. I love you, Harry. <laughs> so that's what I watched. And oh, a there's a lot of Affleck talk this week. There, there was. is. There is. Yeah. <laughs> that guy. Of course, as we mentioned, coming out this week is Godzilla and Gold Million Zilla. Dollar Arm. Is that a baseball movie? Only thing I'm going to say about Million Dollar Arm is if you're from Pittsburgh, <laughs> this this has been made fun of because this story is derived from two Indians that got picked up by the Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh, no. And it became a movie. And somebody predicted on radio that it would become a movie. And Disney picked it up and made it a movie. Wow. Hey, you know what? They did remember the Titans. <laughs> Remember the Titans was very good. They did Miracle. Miracle was very good. Uh, I'm I'm sure this will this will tug at the heartstrings too. Well, and let's be honest. I might be dragged to it this weekend. Let's be honest. It's pretty smart. India's movie market is huge. So starring mm-hmm. a Hollywood movie with two Indians, it's going to make a shitload of money somewhere. It's doing well for Silicon Valley, right? It worked for Slumdog Millionaire. There you go. Yes. There you go. Speaking of Silicon Valley, that show's hilarious. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. I have a better show for you. That show gets me. <laughs> I have a better show for you. Hmm. If neither of you have watched the show Review on Comedy Central. I hear good oh, things. Oh, I just watched the first episode. Oh, my God. Continue the series. It's only like eight <laughs> episodes. You have to watch the whole thing. Going to review Stealing. <laughs> review five out of five stars. <laughs> On that note, again, if you want to talk movies with us, we're here at 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time Live at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, go get us over on YouTube, on Google+, Plus, on Facebook. Wait, do we have a Facebook? Oh, I can't remember. No, we don't. No, we don't have a Facebook now. Yeah, no. well, we all we individually have, have Facebooks. We do all have Facebooks. We're on Twitter, at Sorgatron, at The Rambling Mango. Yep. Keep remembering if you no rambling mango. Rambling mango. I keep wanting to put on the at Mad Mike 4883. We'll see you guys next week. Have uh, fun at the movies there.